Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to edit custom fields on your products in BigCommerce using a CSV. Uh, before we get started, my name is Cal. I'm a developer, store owner, just like you, and I run the e-commerce growth community for store owners like us. Every week I post more e-commerce videos, so if you find this one helpful, subscribe and hit the bell, and you can see more. All right, let me share my screen, and I'm going to walk you guys through how to do this. All right, so I'm logged into my store. First of all, I'm going to go to view and I'm going to open up just one product and I'm going to put in a couple CS. I'm going to put in a couple. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. I'm going to put in a, a couple custom fields. Whew. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is so that we have a, uh, you know, something to look at as an example. Uh, when we do an export. So I'm going to just come in here and say flux yes material plastic I'm going to add one more and have it have the same whoa, material uh, brass. Okay. So i got three custom fields in here going to click save and um, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a product export uh, so go to products export bulk edit and click to export it and then we're going to click to download it and just like we've done in prior videos we're going to go to Google Drive we're going to import it you can definitely do this on Excel too if that's easier <clears throat> Give it a second, open it up, and here we are. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my cost column so that that doesn't annoy me while I'm making the video. And the second thing I'm going to do is I always freeze this first row so that we have it sticky. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my test test product which is right down here on the very bottom row. So this is the product that I edited. And the reason that I put those custom fields in here is so that I can uh, tab all the way over here to the right and see how they came out in the CSV. All the way, and here they are, right here. Let me get rid of this. Oh gosh, come on, man. Here they are right here so they are under the product custom fields column and you can see that this is how it came out so flux equals yes that's one custom field and then there's a semicolon and then there is material equals plastic semicolon and then material equals brass so i did material twice so that you can see that you can have you know multiple custom fields with the same name um, I guess you could have the same name and the same value, but I uh, just kind of wanted to display that. And I put in multiples so that you can see the fact that, you know, they don't get separate fields. They are all basically concatenated into one field using this, uh, using the semicolon as a delimiter, right? So now if I wanted to add one more custom field, I could say, another. I could just put in another semicolon and put in the name of the field that I want to create and put in a value of whatever. You know, the value could be uh, albatross or, you know, whatever. Um, and this is how you can edit them one at a time and really put as many custom fields as you want in here. I'm sure there's a limit. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but you could put a lot of custom fields in. I put in a lot of custom fields in. And so this is this is pretty nice. Now, if you are watching this video, it's probably because you're getting ready to do a whole bunch of custom fields and you're going to get pretty deep into this. So let me show you another trick. So right here, right now, if this was the only change I needed to make, I could download this as a CSV, upload it to my store, and I would be good. Um, so all right, hopefully I didn't cough on you. Um, but if you're if you're going hot and heavy on these custom fields, you're probably gonna wanna you know, bring in some data. And so I wanna show you how to do something. Imagine we have a 
field here called another albatross. And so let's say we have this over here in a different location. So we have the current uh, current custom fields, and then we have new ones that we want to add. Maybe we want to add this on a couple of these, right? And so we have this column here that has some custom field values from our existing store. And then, you know, we've, we've basically temporarily made another column here that is going to have the new values that we want to add. Now, if you want to just overwrite this, that's fine. But if you want to get a little bit fancier, let me show you a trick. Um, I said in a previous video that you don't want to, um, you don't really want to like change your column names, and I'm not recommending that you change your column names. However, if you have an extra column here at the end uh, without a column, without a you know a, a name on it, then it's just going to be um, set aside. BigCommerce is just going to skip this data. And what I want is I want to basically find a way to add this to that and not screw up, uh, you know, other spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to this product custom fields and I'm going to insert a column to the left. And this is going to be my new custom fields column, right? So buyer beware, we're crossing the streams here by creating a new column and moving these things around. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the title here of this column and I'm going to delete it and then paste it in to the new column. So th this is effectively the new pro product custom fields column. And you can see that there is just basically nothing in it. And what you can do is you can concatenate these. So you can put in a formula here that says concatenate this comma this. And so that is going to add these two together. Now, if I expand this so we can see what we've done, you can see that there's actually an error in here because it says flux equals yes, semicolon, material equals plastic, semicolon, material equals brass, another equals albatross. So we missed a semicolon in there, right? So we could say, let's add an extra one in here and put a semicolon in there. And so now that fixed it, right? Because, uh, let's see, yeah, there's a semicolon right there. But now if we copy this formula up, you can see that now we've made some messes here. And so you need to get a little bit, um, you know, a little bit fancier here and put some if statements in to say like, you know, if this is, you know, or if, uh, Let's say if the length of this is greater, oh my gosh, come on, come on, man. If the length of this is greater than zero, then we want to, what should we do? We should say, um, Let's actually make it the other column. So if if that is present, then show this. Otherwise, just show this. Let's see how that works. A little bit better, right? Because we took out the semicolons here that are on these lines where um, where where there wasn't anything here, right? So this is gonna say if, man, this takes a little bit of thought. So if the length of this is greater than zero, meaning that if there's something present there, then basically concatenate both of those with a this. But what we need to do is we need to actually say, okay, so if this is present, then we need to do another if statement to check the length of this. So we need to say if the if the length of that is greater than zero. So if something is present there also, then show the concatenation including the uh, including the semicolon, right? 
And if it's not greater than zero, then we're only going to show this. There we go. So there you go. That fixed it. So if we have an, you know, a, a uh, label equals value. So let's say we had a custom field there. <clears throat> then you can see that it basically grabs that if it's present. It grabs that if it's pr if that's present and this isn't present. And then if both are present, then although this looks complicated, maybe it is complicated. It did take me a second to think about it, and I did do this live on the video, so forgive me if I had to if I had to sit there and think about it for just a second. But basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take out any scenarios where we end up having an extra semicolon, and I'm trying to make sure that we that we have the semicolon if we actually add them both together. So we have the joined one here, flux equals yes, semicolon, material equals semicolon, material equals semicolon, and then another equals albatross. So we got everything. So if you do that, fill it up through the whole document and you know you can basically have your old labels, your new labels, and then you're concatenating them all into a final combined label to do the uh, to merge them basically. Now if uh, if you were trying to remove some, you know if you were trying to remove material equals brass, then you could easily come in here and just do a find and replace and remove it, right? That's not a big deal. It's it's adding them in and making sure that you have both of them when present or one or the other, you know, def depending on what's present. So I'm going to actually delete these because I don't want to put those in there on my real products. I'm going to leave this in here and I'm going to leave these in here. Now, remember, I didn't put anything here in the uh, the titles of these columns. So I've ended up with the new column that has the old label, product space, custom space fields, and it should have, you know, all of, all of the, uh, I guess I should just go ahead and fill this up all the way up to the top. Just to make sure, I mean, I don't see any other custom fields that I had, but technically I would want to make sure that I didn't lose any, just like that. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that I, I showed you guys how to add this, how to be programmatic, how to do this in bulk, basically, because you could see that, you know, if I had the column of the new volumes and I had the column of the old volumes, then using this quick formula here, <laughs> this quote unquote quick formula, um, you can combine them all, which, you know, if you only have like 10 products, this is not a big deal to do it this way. If you have 10,000 products, then, you know, I just saved you a week, right? All right. What I'm going to do next is file, download, download as a CSV, and then I'm going to come back to my store, go to import, I'm going to import that file, choose that it was exported using bulk export, and I'm going to click next. Now, when you come in here, What's going to happen is when it comes down to the custom field, all the way, at, all the way at the bottom. No, not all the way at the bottom. Here it is. Match product custom fields with product custom fields. So you can see that even though we added a new column, it matched up the the name to the name, and this is why we moved that name to the new column. It's also why we removed it from the other columns just to make sure there wouldn't be any confusion. So it automatically found that new column because it has the same header name and it automatically connected it. So we don't even have to do anything, right? The hard part is behind us. We just click next and start import. If there's an error, it'll show here uh, as you're accruing and it'll give you a link at the end to view the errors. So there shouldn't be any errors in what I did. So that everything updated. So now I'm going to go back to that product and we're just going to see, we're going to see what we've done. So here it is. I'm going to click down to custom fields and look, there's my another albatross custom field added. And again, if I had removed some of this with a find and replace, it would have actually removed it too. 
So you could do both add or remove uh, with the CSV method. All right, so that is how you uh, edit, add, subtract, whatever custom fields uh, using the CSV in BigCommerce. Uh, give me a like if this helped you. Be sure to join our community at joinecommercegrowth.com. Uh, and if you need a developer for your site, come check us out at Epic Design Labs and see if we're a good fit. Appreciate you guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys are stuck on, and maybe that'll be my next video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.